Hi everyone. My name is Dr. Amy Henderson Riley. I'm an assistant professor at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where I teach in the MPH, the Master of Public Health program. I have a doctorate in public health from Drexel University, and I completed a postdoctoral fellowship or a postdoc at the Center for Media and Social Impact at American University. So whenever I give an introduction to my work, I often include a Venn diagram of two circles that shows this intersection between two fields, public health and communication. And my work is somewhere there in the middle. So I'm a health communication researcher and practitioner. I teach a graduate course on health communication at Jefferson. And my specific expertise is the study and practice of the communication strategy known as entertainment education or EE. If you're not familiar, EE is a theory-driven communication strategy for individual and social change. The formal definition says something like EE is the process of designing a media message to entertain and educate, to increase knowledge, change behavior, and change social norms. Basically, EE is a storytelling strategy, which of course is an idea that's been around since the beginning of time. So a classic example of EE is Sesame Street, probably you're all familiar with Sesame Street, but EE can be designed for both children and adults alike. Um, EE can use TV, radio, film, street theater, you name it, social media, combination of media approaches. So my work, I'm really interested in how individuals, families, and communities experience EE and how it influences their knowledge, attitudes, behavior, and social norms. Uh, I've conducted EE research both in the U.S. and in several different countries around the world on topics including maternal and child health, women's health, sexual and reproductive health and rights, HIV AIDS, and child protection. I recently led an EE research project in Zambia that was a radio program that embedded in the program was educational information about family planning. Okay, in terms of a research paradigm that I align with, I'm somewhere in between a post-positivist and interpretivism. So I think there is a noble reality of, of how health communication projects like EE impact um, audiences, but I also think that that reality requires context and an understanding of lived experience. So to that end, um, I use a combination of methodological approaches. So sometimes I use qualitative methods, sometimes I use quantitative methods, and sometimes I use both qualitative and quantitative, which is called mixed methods. Whatever it is, whatever the research question is that you want to answer will determine what method or methods you're going to use in a particular research project. So, for instance, I was recently uh, working on a project where we were looking at the impact of an EE project called Girl Splained. So Girl Splained is this really cool web series on YouTube that has sexual health and HIV information um, embedded in the storyline. It was for minority women in the United Kingdom. So we wanted to know how social media users engaged with the program. So the data we used for that project was the social media comments, so the comments on YouTube. So for that project, we used a process of what's called directed content analysis to code and analyze those comments. So that's a, an example of a qualitative project that I've recently been working on. An example of a project where I used quantitative methods is work that I conducted with Katie Borum Chatu and Lauren Fellman, which I did as part of my postdoc. So in that project, we worked with Univision, which is the Spanish language TV channel in the US. Univision included information about early childhood development into several different platforms, um, a scripted drama, a reality show, and a news broadcast. So we use an experimental study design, a pre and post test, to show how those different approaches impacted knowledge, attitudes, and behavior. Um, so for that project, we used a survey. So that's an example of a quantitative approach. I've also conducted research where I've used both quantitative and qualitative methods together. An example for this is my dissertation research um, that I did in Mozambique that was overseen by Saruchi Sood at Drexel University where we looked at the impact of an EE program, uh, a radio program that included educational information about um, maternal and child health. So for that project, we used both surveys and focus groups. Um, so that's an example of mixed methods. Um, let's see, in terms of skills that I think new researchers should learn, 
when you're studying communication, you, you have required courses, and it's important to understand theory and communication history and different methods. But I think an often overlooked skill is cultural competency. So with all of my work, um, I'm aware of my own identity, right? So I'm a white cisgender female who lives in the Northeast. <laughs> um, the way I approach a research study or research question is based on my own experiences and worldview. But I have to be able to work effectively with people of different backgrounds and who have different ex experiences. So I actually think that having diverse teams is critical to the research that I conduct. So for example, some of the studies that I've mentioned here, the Zambia Project, working with um, Hispanic audiences in the U.S. and in Mozambique. Uh, I'm not a member of the audience, and in fact, I'm an outsider. So as students and as young communication researchers, it's important to recognize your own worldview and how you approach projects. So when you conduct research, you have to think about who's on your team and how can you ensure diverse audiences are at the table. Um, you know, I, I always try to include members of the community and the design and implementation and interpretation of results and making sure that my voice is not the only one that's, um, that's at the table. Um, a project that I'm working on right now that I'm really excited about is research about EE and COVID. So in this project, we wanted to know how EE campaigns responded to COVID. So I partnered with Leanne Sangalang, who's a communication professor at the University of Dayton, and colleagues from three different organizations who were running EE programs when the pandemic struck um, back in March of 2020. So we had some really interesting findings regarding how programs adapted. So for example, Sesame Street in Latin America adapted to social distancing and production being shut down by recording a series with Cookie Monster at home uh, in an apartment to teach children uh, about the virus, how to stay safe, and the importance of staying at home. Um, our piece was recently published in a special issue of the journal Health Communication devoted to COVID. A research methods topic that I could talk about for hours is participatory research. So participatory research is an approach where researchers work with stakeholders to design a research study together. Participatory research can engage marginalized communities who aren't traditionally included in research. So as opposed to a top-down approach where I go into a community, I decide, you know, this is the health topic you need to know about, this is the approach we're going to use from a communication perspective, these are the questions I'm going to ask you in a survey or focus group, participatory research is a bottom-up approach. So that's where you design a communication project by and with the community. Um, so it's created with those in ideas and insight from community members. So it's important for you to know as students that participatory research can take a long time. It can be more expensive than traditional research, and it may not always be practical. But for me, from my perspective, I think it's an exciting area for students to learn about, and I try to incorporate participatory research whenever I can. Okay, I think that's all the questions. Um, I don't want to talk for much longer, but I do want to make um, one point for students who are watching. So that point is that communication research cannot exist in a vacuum. So for my work in EE, uh, for mass media approaches, we have to work in tandem with health services and delivery. This pulls in that other side of the Venn diagram, right, the public health. So for example, if you have a communication project that promotes going to the hospital for safe childbirth, uh, are there roads to get to the hospital? If you get to the hospital, are there enough beds? How are women treated once they get to the hospital? How much will it cost to deliver the baby, et cetera? So communication and EE can increase things like knowledge and attitudes, but without thinking about structural supports and kind of those wider elements, it's challenging for our projects and our research to really show shifts or change in long-term impacts such as behavior and social norms. Okay. I'll stop there. Thanks so much for watching this video. Um, if you'd like to connect with me and learn more about EE, health communication, and research methods, you can follow me on Twitter at Amy H. Riley. Thanks so much for watching.